This video will mostly be about ambience, the moving parts of your scenery. I'll also be touching on the day-night cycle. This video is almost all aesthetics. If you want to skip this, you can, but the only thing that could be useful is the day-night cycle. In the backdrop, set the initial time when the flag is clicked. I personally use 8 backdrops, so I've decided to switch the backdrop every 20 seconds, making each day a little over 2 minutes long. I have this loop start once the game officially starts. If you need there to be a day count, we could put a check after the backdrop changes. This will check whether or not to change the day count. I want the day to change once my backdrop becomes sunrise. Make a new variable for your day count and set it to 1 when the flag starts. I have this set at 1 instead of 0 because I like to think that when you start the game, you're playing during your first day, day 1. In the if statement, change day by 1. That is literally all there is to the day-night cycle. You could also have these in every object, land, character, etc. that changes the darkness of the sprite whenever the sky changes. As pretty as these make the game, I don't try to use them since they do create a lag spike whenever the sky changes, and it's a bit too distracting for me. The rest of this video is all optional, and I'm only suggesting ideas for your game to look nice. I'm going to start with water, in this example, my river. First, we have the usual area check to only show the sprite in the correct area. I made a forever loop to move the water up and down like waves. There's four of these gliding blocks to make the movement gradual, like kinetic energy, so the water will slow down before it changes direction. I'm going to use two layers for this river. One is the back layer, so I have to use the go to back layer block. I made a similar sprite for the front layer. For the gliding, I make the gliding more dramatic than the background water, since this layer is closer to the camera. I also made it have a bit of the ghost effect, since real water is translucent. Here's what it looks like with both sprites moving. There is one issue with this land. It slopes off at the end, and when the player walks too far left, he'll start floating, and I don't want that. Most cats don't float. To fix this, we have to disable the movement when your player is in this certain area and these certain positions. In the player sprite, go back to where you have your character changing their x value. For my game, I want to stop my character from moving left in this area, so I'm only coding this in the left statements. What I did here is first specify the area. If the area isn't the shore, the character can move normally. If it is, I'll only allow the character to move left if he is to the right of the drop-off, so he'll stop moving left if he gets too far into the river. We also need to do something similar in the costumes, so the character isn't moonwalking in place. So same thing, if the area isn't the shore, the costumes will change normally. If it is, the costume will only change if the player is to the right of the drop-off, otherwise I'm forcing the character to stand. But what if the character is jumping? Won't this force the character to change to a standing costume while it's jumping? You may ask. Luckily, if you coded the player like I did, the jumping overrides this. No matter what, if the player is not on this ground Y value, it will switch to the jumping costume. So it won't matter what costume I'm forcing here, because if my player's jumping, it will jump. Here's the final result. For some variety in underbrush, I made these bushes in the foreground, so they're layered on top of the character. As I add more things to the game, I need to remember to bring the player, and this, to the front layer. I'm doing another water sprite, but instead of waves, I'm having the water move a lot less dramatically by moving the reflected light instead. For the sitting water in the leader's den, I have the actual water in the background, and the sprite I'm working with is the light on the water. I have three different light costumes I'll be switching through for variety. I have this for the movement. It's pretty subtle, but I want my water to be calm. I also added this fade effect to change the costume. The only way I could really explain what it does is to just show you. Here comes the more complicated part. I say complicated because I have all the projectiles in one sprite. You can definitely have the projectiles separate, but I put them all together so I know only one of them will be active at a time. When I talk about projectiles, I've planned for there to be a bird flying across the screen, a butterfly flying around, and a group of gnats buzzing in place. To start the sprite, I broadcast projectile. Why do I do this? In other sprites, I have broadcast and wait blocks for this. So if I were to add the code here, the background won't change until my bird or whatever is done flying. So to avoid this, I have a different broadcast to run all this stuff. More setup. Every time you teleport, the sprite becomes active. 
and I don't want birds and butterflies flying around inside dens and caves. So I have to make a list of all the areas I'll allow the project to spawn. When this broadcast is called, it'll first check to see if the area we're in now allows for a project hell before going on. I don't want every new backdrop to have a bird or flies or butterflies, so I made a chance variable to basically roll a dice to see if we could continue with the script or not. I made the probability of the project house spawning in the appropriate place 1 in 10 or 10%. Then we choose the change variable again. We don't need to make a new variable since we're not using the 1 to 10 value ever again until the broadcast is called again so we can rewrite it. I have three project tiles, so I have the dice roll choose a number from 1 to 3 to randomize which one it'll spawn. I'll start with the easiest one, the gnats. It's a one costume project tile that moves a very small x and y value to look like they're buzzing around. We need this boolean first. If the dice roll chooses one, it'll spawn the gnats. Whenever I say spawn, there's no cloning actually happening. What I mean is that this sprite will choose what it wants to be and acts like that creature until it's told to hide again. If the dice chooses two, I'll have the sprite turn into a bird that'll fly across the screen, then disappear. First, I'll broadcast something here so something could happen at the same time as the rest of the code here. I'll get to that in a second. For my bird, I have it show at a random Y value in a specified area so it's not flying on the ground, and to the far left. Then it'll move right until it touches the edge, continue moving right until it disappears, then hides. Now what was this broadcast for? In the costumes, I've labeled several costumes for the bird flapping its wings. In the same sprite, when it receives this broadcast, the sprite will rotate through these costumes. The reason I can't put this in with the other code is just because I can't. Both of these scripts are playing at different speeds. One has weight blocks while the other is busy gliding to change costumes without looking choppy. So we have to have two different scripts working at the same time. If the dice chooses three, I'll have the sprite turn into a butterfly. This one will also be broadcasting to have his costume changing while it moves. I made my butterfly act so that it stays flying around the screen. Don't worry about it stopping. Whenever you leave an area, the sprite will stop all activity. I have my costumes labeled for my butterfly flapping its wings. So like the bird, I have a forever loop cycling through that. Now to assemble everything. Just stack all of the if statements on top of each other and put it all right under the set random to one to three block inside the if statement. It should look like this. It's a pretty massive script, but it's a whole bunch of sprites in one sprite, per se. And there we go, that's all I have for ambience. For this playthrough, I did switch that pick a number to one to ten to pick a number from one to one just so I could show off the project tiles. When I change it back, the projectile should only spawn 10% of the time. See you in the next video.